Hi everybody, welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, Q&A. One great question I'm fired up for. We are talking middle field open, middle field closed. Why is it important? What does it tell you? I'm fired up for this one. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the QB School. The idea for this video comes from a question from the Patreon community. Brandon over there just started as a member way to support the channel hit me up with a question I thought it was a great question he suggested making it a video I thought that was a great idea too and here we are so the question for this video comes from Brandon Tibbles appreciate it and of course got a question for you right off the bat not sure what the norm is for submitting questions so let me know if you prefer something different than messages what's the importance of identifying middle of the field open backslash closed every play could you walk through the implication of what's going through the quarterback's mind once he identifies that? This may be more of a video rather than you shooting me a back a typed up answer. Thanks again, man. Appreciate all the videos you're producing. Brandon, I appreciate the question through the Patreon community. It means a lot to me. You get over there supporting the channel. Hopefully you enjoy the content too, but love this question. And to be honest with you, I had never thought it or been asked it or really even thought about it while I was learning it. So I had to do kind of a little reflection on how I want to answer this. And I do think it is deserving of a video. And so hopefully this makes sense. For me, this was kind of an evolution of football. And so the closed open identification for a quarterback has a really a few layers of understanding. And so unfortunately, some of these questions that I have to answer in this kind of broad spectrum the best answer is it depends. So how is it important? Is It depends on what type of system you're in. If you're in a system that is strictly pure progression for your reads, and what I mean by that is they call a play, no matter what the defense is, the read is, you're gonna throw the slant to the flat to the check down, or the in to the shallow to the check down, or the hitch to the corner to the check down. If that's the type of system you're in, the middle of the field open, middle of the field closed is less relevant. It's not irrelevant, but I think it really depends on the type of system you're in. And so the type of system where it is the most important is what I think is basically what I'm going to consider the top echelon of how to attack defenses. Because with a closed open system, you allow the offense to spread both horizontally and vertically on every single concept. So if you're in a pure progression offense, it doesn't matter what the coverage is, what the situation is, you're reading the one receiver to the two receiver to the three receiver. And yes, that might allow you to get the ball out earlier sometimes. It's not going to allow you to, t to attack the width and depth of the field. And so when you're in a closed open reading scheme, and that's pre-snap. Now I get it too, that you're not going to be able to tell every single time. It's not, you don't always have a clicker when you're playing quarterback on the field at eye level. But when you have a system that allows you to identify the open and closed element of a shell, the top end of the defense, the coverage, it allows you to make decisions faster. So right at the snap, you can have a great idea about what part of the defense you're going to attack. And so that's the second part of the question. What are the implications? What go, what's going through a quarterback's head? Well, once you identify the shell of a defense, whether it's open or closed, and closed just means that there's a post safety of middle field player and open means that there's not a middle field player so it can be a bunch of different variations of that and we'll talk about it when i look at some stills but that's the essence of it closed is there a middle field player a post safety to take away the post so you just can't drop back and throw up a, a post ball with no middle field or safety help and middle field open where now that middle of the field is open and you can attack the middle of the field with seams different ways to get into the middle of the field and so that's really what it does from a quarterback standpoint. If it's closed, you know that there's a post middle field player. You also know that you probably have one-on-ones on the outside. You also know that you probably have anything you want in the flats, but it's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. And you also probably know that you have seam opportunities. Now, if it's open, there's a lot more different combinations that they can play. You can get outnumbered really quickly in zone coverage. So it's about understanding what the spaces are. I'm not gonna go through the in-depth of every single zone. I'll put up the zone coverage videos, but in any sort of open coverage, you're probably gonna to try to attack the middle of the field deep. You're gonna probably try to attack the hole shots, kind of outside between the, the safeties 
and the corners and what's usually called the whole area. But again, it's really just being able to identify what the differences in those things open up zone coverage wise. So if it's, you know, open and it's cover two, which is different than probably what most people refer to as cover four, which think cover four is just quarters. So four deep players covering the back, covering the width of the field, quarters. They each have a quarter of the field. Cover two, think of it as just two safeties. They each have a half of the field. So different space opportunities. So quarters, I'm thinking I want to throw a post. Middle field open, cover two, I'm thinking I want to rip a hole shot or rip a seam up the middle of the field. So there's just really, it's pattern recognition so that you can know where the holes in the zone are going to be or where the matchups are going to be that kind of give you an advantage. And it's really just that pre-snap recognition with post-snap confirmation is the way that I think of it. That's why you, 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 know, you always want to see quarterbacks' eyes up. That's one of the negatives about being in the shotgun. You have to take your eyes down for a second to catch the ball. But if you're under center, your eye should be up looking at that shell and realizing exactly what's going on. Are they going to middle field closed? Are they going to stay in middle field open? Are they going from closed to open? And if you're in closed, the other part about it is if you're in closed, some reads will be based on which way are they rocking? Where's the string being pulled? What's the rotation usually called of the safeties? Which can also impact a read. But again, back to the actual implications is it really depends on the system. If you're in a pure progression, there is no sort of shell read. The uh, wide receivers aren't allowed to make adjustments based on the shell, anything like that. Well, then it doesn't matter. You're looking at leverage. You know, there's a number of really good schemes that all they do is look at leverage, pre-snap leverage. Well, for me, I want concepts that attack the entire width and depth of the field. And the only way to do that, I can't say, hey, you know, read one, two, three, four, five every single play. We can say, versus this shell, I want this being red first, one to two. Versus the opposite shell, I want this side being red, one to two. And so that really puts a stress on a defense because now all of our wide receivers think that they might get the ball. As opposed to saying, hey, in this concept, I know I'm the first read. I'm going to run as hard as I can. Well, in this other concept, I'm not the first read. I'm just going to turn it down. And so it really stresses a defense, I think, and allows the quarterback to really use their vision their capacity for pattern recognition to get the ball out faster. I think you see people in schemes and uh, offensive structures that allow quarterbacks to make really quick decisions based on shell, meaning middle field open, middle field closed. And then from that, you got to know if it's man or zone, which is a little bit more complex, but it's not impossible the vast majority of the time. It allows you to get the ball out faster to a wider array of options. You have answers. And I think that's the thing playing quarterback, especially at the highest level, that's really all you want. You want to have answers versus everything that you see. Yeah. Now, will you see ghosts? Will you get confused? Will they try to mess with you? Absolutely. Yes. They, they get paid too. They're on scholarship too. They practice too. But at the same time, if our system is built on what the quarterback's seeing, that recognition, you can take advantage of a lot more space, in my opinion, by being able to be multiple in your concepts tethered to where you want the ball to go based on what the shell is. So let's look at a few examples here just so we can be put some visuals to what we're talking about. If you dig this kind of content and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, get the notification. It lets you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I really appreciate the support for the channel. Help this thing continue to grow. Let's get back to the video. So this first image we're gonna look at here is the Wisconsin defense versus the Buckeyes. Now this is a really easy one to see. Middle field closed. There's a closed player. Now, again, what we said about middle field closed is you're going to have one-on-ones on the outside almost always. So there they are, one-on-ones. Now, this sure looks like man, just with the eyes of the corner, eyes of the corner. Sometimes you can tell with what's going on in the slot area. you know. But a lot of these guys, what are the benefits of being in a closed defense? Obviously, you can't just come out there and throw the post. You also probably can get an extra guy into the box area, depending on what kind of front you're playing. So again, you got to know what they're trying to do. But anytime you see closed, when I was playing quarterback, if I saw closed, it doesn't matter if it's closed man or zone. It's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. It can be cover three. It can be cover one man-to-man. -man. It can be a three deep zone. It's one-on-one -on -one to the outside. And if I like my matchup, it's going to be a pretty good opportunity to make get a big chunk on the perimeter. Now the next one that we'll look at is the same game, Wisconsin versus Ohio State. Now, nobody in the middle of the field. This is middle field open. Or it sure looks like middle field open. Now, this looks like 12 personnel, 
probably a heavy run. So they want to get extra guys into the fit. But again, if you're going to come out here and you are a team that likes to throw the post, and I think the post is one of the easiest big play shots, you're going to come out here and run this guy right to the post. Right to the post, both sides, with an out or a corner or an in. Anything to hold this quarters player, come up here and rip this post. And then you're just going to read this quarter safety. Have an opportunity to take advantage of this middle of the field with a post. The other thing about quarters, and when you good way to see middle field open, quarters is more of a birds on a fence. Defensive guys in a straight line, also an identifier, an identifier for zero. But this quarters, flat look across, is going to tell you again, you got one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the outside. you probably got anything you want in the flats. Again, this comes from pattern recognition, and that's why it's important for quarterbacks to know the difference. Middle field open. Okay? It's going to tell you where to go with the ball if you're in an, a scheme that the reads are tethered to the shell of the defense. So now let's have another example. This is a little bit more complicated. This is three by one, borderline into the boundary here. Again, to me, I would identify this as no post player. Middle field open, split field coverage. And so what I mean by that is if it was to be middle field closed, one of these safeties would have to get to the middle of the field, the post. But it's not quite as simple as just old school cover four quarters or two. This to me looks like what I'm used to calling some variation of a combo coverage. So we got the corner and outside number one receiver that look to me like they're going to be locked up. Then I think we're playing three on two right here. Basically quarters with this five group right here. So this safety is playing quarters. This safety is playing quarters right here on the two and the three. Now, there's a lot of reasons to do this and a lot of defenses do it. But again, really it's just three over two. But there's still nobody in the middle of the field. So our core principles, if we were going off the shell, would tell us it's open. Again, it doesn't matter what they do on the backside here. It can matter a lot by what the back does coming out with an eligible. But again, it's two over one right here. So they're just basically saying, you're never going to throw it to this outside guy or we like our matchup and we're just going to roll three over two and really three over two on the backside too. Looking for a numbers advantage in the pass game. Now let's look at Iowa versus Minnesota. Again, really simple look here. We got a one by three nub. Really simple, right? Middle field closed. Looks like some variation of corners over here. It's even more of an indicator of man. Doesn't matter though. It really doesn't matter if it's closed man or zone. It's closed. We got a middle field player. We can't just drop back and chuck up a post. And we're going to have one-on-ones on the outside. That's the, that's the essence of being able to understand closed coverage from a quarterback pre-snap read. It allows you to make decisions faster. Another look from this Iowa-Minnesota game. Now, nobody in the middle of the field. Middle of the field, wide open. We got middle field open or split field safeties. Okay? So again, split field safeties. You can get outnumbered really quickly. We got three over two, and we got some variation of three over two over here. Now it doesn't matter that it doesn't mean that you can't throw it out here because it's three over two. It just means that you have to know what part of the field you want to attack. You probably want to attack the middle of the field if it's cover two. If it's quarters, you probably want to try to get to the post or get to the flat area. You're going to know that it's a little bit harder. And then depending on how they play their underneath coverage. Are they straight spot? Are they spot droppers? Meaning that these guys, these defenders are dropping to 10 yards on the hash or have a landmark that they're dropping to, or are they matching up? Are they turning, trying to reroute and match up someone who comes in their area and it's basically match up man. So there's a lot of nuance that's probably beyond the scope of this video. But again, it's not that hard to see, right? Like it's open. Now, granted, I picked these clips, so they're obviously going to be pretty easy to see, but I mean, this is open. Two safeties, split field, meaning that they can get into half field coverages when you get into higher levels of football. But again, you're still attacking the same areas. Where's the space? Flat area, flat area. If you know it's quarters, if you know these are quarters, and the way you can tell quarter safeties is they're usually a little bit tighter, both to the line of scrimmage and to the middle of the field. Especially in the league where you're going to have tighter hashes. It's a little bit harder to tell at the lower levels of football. 
But again, you get any sort of bail out here, quarters coverage, you got anything you want one-on-one -on -one to the outside, outside the numbers. Again, but the essence of this thing is, what's the middle of the field? It's open. We're ready to roll. Let's go. Now, a little bit more modern football here. Not modern. A little bit more, uh, a little bit muddier of a look you can get into and what a lot of teams play, some variation of 4 2 5. Now, this might be a 3 3. It doesn't matter what it is. Five on the back end. Okay, so five on the back end here. To me, and this is might be giving away secrets, but a 4 2 5 is just a cover, a 4 4. Now, it doesn't matter if these guys line up like this or not. To me, the read here, if you play a 4 2 5 that runs right across like this, it gives you any sort of crazy look. You're just looking at this shell. What do these three guys do? Is he going to drop to the middle of the field? We're going to get, you know, hook curl defenders. Or are these two guys going to buzz out of here and play half field safeties? And he's going to hang right here or do some sort of Tampa variation to the middle of the field. That's really it. So you got to have the capacity to have a wide enough lens to be able to see what these three players are doing in some variation of a 4 5 Now you can get clues and hints by what the corners are doing. But if you're playing fast and if you're back here in a helmet looking at eye level this way, you got to be able to identify the safeties, know what their tendencies are, what the down and distance is. You know, we got a first down here. What do we expect them to do? Go closed, go open. That's where our eyes are, and that then dictates where we're going to go with the ball on our reads. One, two. So in that vein, here we go. Exact same look, four, two, five. Now these two safeties start getting depth. Sure looks like cover two. Corners are rolled up. We get a cloud corner. There it is. Just as simple. 3-3, three, three, whatever the front is, it's six guys. There's only so many guys on the back end. It's open right here. Let's go attack this area. We're going to get a probably some sort of cloud reroute out here. Here's that hole area I was talking about up on the sideline. We get those hole shots talked about. Just got to be careful throwing to the flats. You're probably going to have an opportunity to manipulate these underneath hook defenders with your eyes. Here's that same Baylor defense versus Oklahoma State again. Same game, same drive. Again, here are those three safeties. Got to be able to identify the three safeties. Now, that doesn't quite look the same. Looks like we're getting a little string pull over here. Guy's coming down probably. We're probably going to get middle field closed. This corner looks a little bit different. Not quite the same cloud leverage. Obviously, this safety doesn't look like he's getting quite as much depth. You know, these guys are on different levels. Again, you, you won't be able to tell playing quarterback like, oh, he's at 10, he's at 5. But you can sure tell, hey, he's coming down. Now we're getting into potentially a 7-man box. We're going to have issues. They're in 10 personnel. You know, it's going to be hard to run the ball right here. Gonna, but we are going to get a great opportunity with middle of the field closed. Okay, we're going to get one-on-ones outside. We're going to have a great opportunity to throw to the flat. And we're going to have this great opportunity to throw to either seam. Right here with either glances seams from the in inside that's our mindset when closed so now let's go a little graduate level here this is 2018 alabama versus lsu okay where's the middle of the field looks like we got a middle field player closed this sure looks like bump man okay closed man some variation there it is that's simple this is the best of the best save in defense here we go Next snap, this is a motion across, right pre-snap here. We're gonna, they're late adjusting here, running the corner across. What does it look like shell-wise here? It looks like open to me. Now, it, it might be adjusting. These are one of the things that makes it tough on a defense. When you motion across, especially from a 2x2 two two to a 3 by one what are they doing? Are they running a corner over? You got to know your personnel. You got to see the adjustment on the back end. Again, most of the offenses I played in, in the league only cared about the shell and whether it was man or zone. I only played for a third of the league. But you, again, you've got to have the capacity to see this in real time. What's the shell doing? Sure, you can take this kind of motion knowledge. You know, what's he doing? Did they run across? Does he kick in and stop and everybody else bump out? You know, what's their adjustment to motion? But again, the high-end defenses will be, have the capacity to run a corner over and still play zone coverage or match coverage, whatever their system is. Saban certainly does. So again, doesn't change the shell read. It's open. And here's that same play post-snap. So now Burrow's got the ball in his hand. Again, confirmed, open. Sure looks like some variation of man or match underneath here. Looks like he's trying to have a hard time fighting through this to get over. 
This was the corner who was running across late, too. But again, we got some variation. Man match right here. Man match right here. Looks like he's coming out over the top, working this way with no threat on the backside. But again, you know, just from a scheme standpoint, we got three guys out right here. They got four guys pushing this way with help. You know, that's the thing, a sign of a really good defense for me. They're not covering grass. They're covering their opponent in their zone, pushing towards that. And that's why the benefits of playing zone match coverage, it's just not easy to get lined up and make sure you get the perfect alignment assignment every single play. But from a quarterback perspective, that's the essence of this thing, right? What's the middle of the field? It's open. All right, let's roll through our open reads. One of the reasons I'm not a huge fan with these tight formations is because it muddles the middle of the field read. You know, it's a lot easier when you're in these type of formations. You know, I think of like the Rams, LSU this year, in these tight squeeze formations. You better have pure progressions when it comes to this because everybody's closer, more condensed. Who knows what's going to happen here, right? Like either one of these guys could go to the middle of the field. You know, these guys could be run fit guys. These guys could be thinking play action. You know, there's any sort of issue. But for me, I'm looking at the shell. And right there, I can't tell you what's going on. It looks to me like it's probably going to be open, but it could just as easily invert into closed. You can maybe sometimes get a beat if the linebackers are buzzed over. You can know that he's going to come down for the fit. But other than the, like massive shifts over, you know, if they play this thing straight up, you're going to have a hard time identifying it pre-snap. And that means you're going to have to look at him post-snap to get a confirmation. What's the middle of the field look like? Again, another snap from this game. And the reason I keep going to this game is because I'm going to do this game for the Patreon community next week. This is Burrow 2018. You know, pre Burrow the Fantastic to see exactly what happened in 18. But as far as middle field open, middle field closed, there it is. Middle field open. Now, this is a great indicator post snap here. When you see a safety turn their hips to the sideline, they're running out. The other thing that you can always pay attention to that happened on this play is communication between these guys. You know, if they're giving signals to each other, you know it's some variation of middle field open, you know, where they have the capacity to bracket this thing seven different ways. So it doesn't matter what it is. I really don't care what it is as an offensive player. It's middle field open, some sort of middle field open man or match. I don't care what it is. My rules will tell me what to do with the ball on just about every single play. And finally, one last one, just so you don't think every single one is difficult. Again, it's really usually easy to see middle field closed, especially if you're playing with any sort of tempo. Middle field closed, bump, man. Bump, man. Now, sure, he might bail out of there with that technique, but he also might be trying to play a game with the wide receiver. But if your read is based on middle field closed, middle field open, well, we got a pretty good indication of exactly what it is. We should know exactly where we're going to go with the ball pre-snap. That's why you always hear these quarterbacks, why it's so important to be able to have a vision, understanding, anticipation. It comes with being able to diagnose the shell as kind of the first variable. So that's it. Hopefully you better understand the importance and the implications of being able to identify middle of field open and middle of field closed. I hope it wasn't kind of an oversimplification of it. There are certainly times when defenses can try to fool with you and make you get that thing confused and you can obviously make mistakes with it. But the more you do it, the more aware you are of it. If you're in a system where your read is tethered to that, it, it becomes second nature. And it's really the first thing I ever watch, whether I'm watching a game in person, watching a game on TV, watching all 22, just because it gives you such a foundational understanding of where you want to attack those defenses. So again, it's all about closed or open, and then you'd love to know man or zone, but closed or open, and then based on the read of the play, if your read for the quarterback with your concept is tethered to where you go with that, then it allows you to play so much faster. You also know closed or open where the holes are in zone coverage and even man coverage. You know where the one-on-ones are, you know where the help is, you know what the leverage is of the technique, and all of those things fit together to play faster. That's the essence of it. It's about allowing the quarterback to play as fast as they possibly can with their decision making, and then the accuracy, the technique, the fundamentals, all those things come into play. But the pre-snap vision, the pre-snap pattern recognition, the post-snap confirmation, all those things come together and the reason that they have to know it is to play fast. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. That was a fun one. Keep the questions coming. Again, I appreciate the support from the Patreon community. If you're not a member, get over there, check it out. I appreciate it. See you next time.